Hello everyone, Memory here. Today's topic is going to be about the upcoming Manos update, what you should do to prepare for it, and also some potential money-making opportunities to look out for from the update. You are probably watching me gathering in Pilgrim's Haven, and I promise you it is much related with today's topic. Warning, the following content might have unreliable source, which could be changed after the update hits an A, or whichever server you're in. Also, this video might contain too much math and information to process, please ingest with caution. Anyways, let's get started. From what I've heard, the Manos update will be introduced to NA version sometimes around mid-June 2019. First of all, what is the Manos update all about? Well, for example, in addition to the gathering level, they introduce a new thing called gathering mastery. At max level, you will get increased amount gathered and also increased chance for rare and special items to appear. As you can see on the table here, the amount of base items such as rough stones will be increased by 400%. And the chance of rare items, which I'm guessing are the shards and hard shards, will be increased by 250%, as well as 85% increase in amount gathered. It doesn't end here, not just for gathering, pretty much all life skills will have its own mastery level. Max fishing mastery will give increased chance of getting the newly added orange grey fish and relic shard by 5%. Max hunting mastery increases the amount of item gathered by 300%. Max cooking and alchemy level will increase your cell regain from selling imperial crates for 150% or 200%. I'm not sure because every source I search up tells me different numbers, but it will be a significant amount judging from the buff that other life skill mastery gives. It will also increase the chance of you using 10 times worth of material with one single proc when you are doing cooking or alchemy on utensils. Max Processing Mastery allows you to process 250 raw materials at once instead of 5 or 10. Training Mastery increases your mount EXP gain, which means you're gonna level your horses faster, increase in chance of getting skills for your mounts when it levels up, and increase the chance of having a higher tier offspring in breeding. I haven't found anything about trading, farming, and sailing mastery yet, but I'm sure they will receive significant buffs like the rest of the kids. Alright, if you do any kind of life skill, you will know how much of a buff they are. It just sounds too good to be true, and that's why there is a cost. Literally, you will need to spend billions of silver before you're able to reach that realm. Let me explain. So first of all, your current life skill will grant you some mastery level, but not too much. If you are master 1 for example, on a certain life skill, you will have 52 mastery points. The rest of the mastery levels comes from the new Manos gear set, including the accessories. And each piece of gear at its base is more expensive to obtain compared to the boss gears. On top of that, you need the new black crystals and concentrated black crystals to enchant them instead of using the normal black stones. And of course, those crystals are more expensive and rare to get compared to the normal ones. Furthermore, fail stack system does not work on Manos clothes and accessories, so there is no way to increase the success rate. And even if you are super rich and you are the Iron Jesus, after you got a full set of 10 Manos gear with Master 30 life skill, you would still be at around 1800 mastery level, which is calculated from the current information we have. That means there is room for cash up items or new food buffs and so on. Now that sounds more believable. Great buff with an unrealistic cost. Now this is where the fun part begins. I found a nice little visual representation somewhere in the reddit about what materials you need to craft one of these Manos gears. As you can see, to make just one piece of one part of the Manos clothes, you need 50 oil of fortitude and 50 cotton fabric, and you need to make 15 of those. 
and then you'll have to get 50 magical shard which we all know is already quite expensive while making your Jin Vipers. You get the idea. And that is just one piece of the equipment. Here is the graph of making the Manos accessory. Here is another version of the Manos accessory materials. Since we don't know the exact material required to craft Manos gears, we have to wait until the release before we can be sure of which version it's gonna be. And this is the Manos gathering tool, which we already know from the Manos hoe. And finally, we have the 5 recipes to make the black crystals, which is used to enchant the Manos gears. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm mining in Pilgrim's Haven. First of all, the price of those gemstones such as emerald and sapphire has already skyrocketed because of the Manos close. Secondly, the silver and platinum price is going up as well because of the Manos accessories. Finally, because of the ore crystals, supreme hides and gemstone requirement, metal solvent, leather glaze and gem polisher is going up in price too. Out of all gathering life skills, mining ores would give you the most amount of those material needed. And therefore, it suddenly become a very profitable activity. How profitable exactly? I made a spreadsheet of all the materials I gather in one hour and calculated the total value. Note that I was using magical pickaxe with tier 3 hedgehog and a fig pie. I've earned around 59 million after tax worth of items. The true value would be higher because some of the items like rough stone would be used to process into other items, which would again raise its value. From my past experience, doing gyphons or tree group grind yields around 40 to 60 million silver per hour depending on your luck. So this is actually as good as doing the end game group grind, except you don't need to prepare a lot of elixirs, organize in groups, and have to PvP for a spot. Now I know what you're thinking, the majority of the profit on that table comes from rare items such as Kafra stone. But our main character today is actually the rough stone, because it is the bottleneck of making metal solvents. Here we have another spreadsheet on profit per hour making metal solvents. The red number represents the income per hour after tax at the time of this video, which is 43 million. And that is factoring in my alchemy speed, which is around 4 seconds per proc. If you have faster alchemy speed, you can easily make more silver per hour, provided you have enough material. The rough stone is the hardest material to get now because somehow people are selling quite a bit of trace of savagery on the market these days. So yes, because of the upcoming Manos update, the above activities, which is very old by the way, suddenly received a buff. Bear in mind this is just one of the money making activities that is buffed, and there are many more to explore. The other very profitable activity that I can see is gathering blood. This is because you need a great amount of blood for making your black crystals. Basically you will probably never have enough for quite some time after the Manos update hits. It also gives the fire horn which is another material needed to make the black crystals. I'm guessing it would be equivalent or maybe more silver per hour compared to mining because the main material is blood, which is worth 3 times more than rough stone. I would recommend doing deer blood because that recipe uses powder of darkness, which everyone should have way too much from workers and alchemy exchanges. If you have a worker empire similar to mine, you should consider not selling certain materials from your workers. Since you are able to process large amount of materials at once using the process mastery, you will be able to make more crate for your crate runs. And that means if you are getting 1.5 billion per month from it, you would probably be able to double or triple that amount after the update. This is why all crate materials are bought out at the time of this video, because people are piling these materials until they can mass process them after the update. As a result, for me, which is someone who does not do crate runs but have a big worker empire also benefits from this, because all raw materials are easily sold through the marketplace for a high price. You can also stockpile imperial cooking and alchemy crates if that's your thing. 
and the list goes on. You get the idea. Here is one last example to make money from the update. This one, I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm pretty sure there will be people complaining me ruining their profit, but trust me, there are many more examples like this. But I won't be going over them because I don't want to make the video too long. Finally, I have to emphasize again that the material for making the Manos gear might change when it comes to the NA version, or whichever version you're playing. Also, I do have a feeling that most people will be hoarding the material and therefore the market might not have as a big of a need for those materials after the update. So there is a risk involved if you are planning to overpiling them. Personally, what I would do is hoard enough materials like the forest, emerald and magic shard for myself only and start making money by either mining or gathering plus alchemy. I will keep all the shining golden seals from workers too because I've heard that it is used to exchange for something good in the Manos update. I would also happily sell all the high priced raw materials like fur timber and hold on to the low priced ones like iron until the price rises up. Those low priced material cannot really drop any lower because it is pretty much on its minimum price already so you can't really go wrong with that. Anyways, hopefully this video would end up helping people instead of making everyone lose silver from overstocking the wrong materials. Happy gaming and I'll see you in the next video.